again, it's like four really quick strokes, grab her, and then cross over so that you have a lane to the ball. Oh, I'm so sorry. I totally just scratched you. That's okay. I get scratched all the time. <laughs> We're here at Harvard Westlake and today we're going to teach three synchronized swimmers how to play water polo. Let's see if they can keep up. Hi, my name is Joe Kabath. I've been doing synchro for over 20 years and I currently coach for the Los Angeles Synchro Aquamans. I'm Danielle. I've been doing synchronized swimming for 10 years. I swim for the Santa Clara Aquamaids and I'm also a coach. Hi, my name is Patrice. I've been a synchronized swimmer nationally for over 10 years and I currently coach with the Los Angeles Synchronoms. I'm Ashley, I've been playing water polo for 16 years and I'm a part of the USA Women's Water Polo National Team. Hi, I'm Elise, I've been playing water polo for 17 years and I'm a member of the USA Women's Water Polo Team. Hi, I'm Rachel, I've been playing water polo for 20 years and I play on the USA Women's Water Polo Team and we will be going to the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. we are going to be passing. Passing is really important in water pool because it's one way for us to move the ball from one side of the pool to the other side of the pool without having to literally swim it over there, which takes forever because we only have a certain amount of time while we're on offense. So at least and I are gonna demonstrate for you guys. When we pass, we're gonna have our egg beater going and you guys already know how to egg beater. So we're gonna have our shoulder essentially facing and our hand that's out in front of us that's pulling as you guys do. And that's gonna be facing the person that we wanna pass the ball to. Our arm is gonna be up out of the water. You want your elbow to be above your ear. You don't want your elbow in the water because then you're gonna shot put it. And you want the Y, so like a shaka. You want your Y of your hand to be facing forward. And then when you pass, all you're gonna do is follow through. So another super important part of passing is the catching. You don't want to catch with like a solid hand, otherwise it's just gonna fall off. You want your hand kind of rounded and as the ball comes in, you're gonna absorb it and then put it back out. So she absorbs it and puts it back out and I absorb it and my arm goes back and then my arm comes forward. All right, I think you got that? <laughs> I feel pretty comfortable, a little nervous, because I don't know if I have that coordination. We'll just have to see. I just hope it doesn't hit me in the face, or I hit my partner in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I feel pretty confident about passing the ball. I'm not too sure about catching, but I will try. We're going to have you guys try and pass in a group of three, so, and just try and keep that ball moving. Here we go. Oh, we did it. <laughs> follow through, all the way through. Okay, we gotta get you to snap your wrist a little bit more. <laughs> if you go the other way, it's gonna be harder to catch because you're gonna be catching the ball across your face. Oh, I see. Alright, now remember, you can only touch it with one hand. So if you touch it with two hands like you just did, yeah. other teams fall. Oh, oh really? Alright, snap your wrist. There we go. Nice pass. All right. Easy yeah. does it. That's passing. Passing was a little bit easier for me. I couldn't really catch the ball, so that was more difficult. I had a lot of fun passing the ball, but I didn't like flip my wrist correctly and I wasn't turning my body the way I was supposed to. I'm just really scared of the ball. <laughs> Honestly, I was so scared of it hitting my face. They did pretty well. They could all pass pretty well. Catching was a hard part, whether they were afraid of the ball or they just didn't have soft hands. Passing and catching kind of go really hand in hand. So if you struggle at one, it's going to be difficult to do it consistently, but their passing was awesome. Second challenge, we're gonna work on shooting from the perimeter. We usually set up with five people around the perimeter, about six meters outside the goal. Those are our perimeter players. That's where we take most of our outside shots from. Shooting's very similar to passing. You start with the same base. If your left hand out in front schooling, if you're a right-hander, elbow above the ear, stretch your arm back as far as you can. Using a lot more force, we're making sure we're coming forward with our arm and our wrist at the very end. And you're kind of looking at where you wanna shoot the ball particularly high corners, but wherever you can get it, because you're going to be shooting on Ashley. She's one of the best in the world. Pretty difficult even for us. <laughs> <laughs> and for your legs, before you shoot, you want to kind of rise up, and then right as you shoot, you're going to want to brush stroke kick. So you're going to come up, and then right before you shoot, you're going to brush stroke kick. That's going to add extra power into your shot. There All right, go. let's do it. I am super scared. I'm not going to lie. Um, they're very powerful. I don't know if I have that much power in my arm. <laughs> I definitely thought it was going to be a lot easier, but seeing how far they are away 
from the goal, I don't know if I'm even going to get anywhere close to that. They're powerhouses. <laughs> They're powerhouses. Yeah. I'm, I'm a little scared, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> You guys go shooting a shot. You're gonna position yourself on the perimeter about five to six meters outside of the goal. There's a couple different ways to pick up the ball to shoot. Like you can step on the ball, which just means you put your hand on top of the ball and use it to kind of like, you can push it under a little bit and then use it to get your body up. Or you can just straight start with it in your hand and hold it here. Since you're shooting on Ashley, faking it's a really good option as well, which is just kind of holding it and you're moving your arm and you're trying to get her to jump one way or jump the other or dig her hands a little deeper in the water or you could just hold it straight up and then just follow it through really quickly. Cool, let's try it. Okay. Keep it in your hand, keep that elbow up, keep that elbow up above your ear. Okay, yep. Yeah. All right, <laughs> there you go. Don't say sorry, she's, she's fine. She's used to it. used to it. All right, here we go, next one, next one. Keep your elbow up, keep your elbow up out of the water. Uh-oh. Too much for a snap this time. Yep. <laughs> Ooh, almost. Oh, that was a good shot. I think it went all right. I got the fake in it down, but I didn't get to make it into the goal. <laughs> I struggled. <laughs> it was a lot harder to try to like stay up and like holding the ball. It's like all the coordination and all the parts and pieces that go with it. It was pretty challenging. The shooting part was fun. It's just the faking it, which is, I want to do this, which is a synchro skull, but I, re I have to remember that I'm not in synchro, I'm in water polo. Right. They had some good shots. Their form was, not as great, they need a little bit more time to learn the technique. It's a lot more technical when we actually break it down than we think when we're playing. Danielle definitely had some heat behind her shot, so if she's down to join water polo, you're definitely welcome. I thought it was really cool to see, even just with a couple shots that they did, how they got better and more comfortable with it. I mean, it's definitely a skill that the more you do it, the better you get. I mean, that's probably their first time ever shooting, so that was awesome for like how new they are to it. Gripping the ball is a difficult thing to do, especially when you're first starting out. A lot of people tend to grip it with their fingers instead of their whole hand, but they're picking it up really quickly, which is really cool. For our third challenge, we're gonna be working on releasing. In water polo, it's really important to be able to release and get away from your defender. If you can stay in a press for the entire possession, there's no chance the offense can score. So on offense, we wanna to try to break down that press with the release. This is one of the biggest points of contact you'll have in a game. We have a bunch of different releases, but I'll teach you two different releases today. One where your defender is really heavy, how to get out of that, and then one where your defender is away a little bit and how to still be able to get the ball and find a passing lane. Those are some really important keys on offense. The first release we're going to work on is when your defender is kind of straight in front of you and being a little heavy. So we're going to start by being locked up like this. So to get out of this, you're going to take like as many as you want, probably four really, really quick strokes in place. And then I'm going to grab her with my right hand and cross over with my left. So now if the ball's over here, she's behind me and I have a free hand to get the ball. I'll demonstrate kind of quickly and then I'll break it down again if you need. Ready? The more splashing, the more distracting it is for her actually. Again, it's like four really quick strokes, grab her, and then cross over so that you have a lane to the ball. The second release is kind of when your defender's away, but in the lane. So I can't cross over because I'd be kind of going straight over her head. So I'm gonna go behind her. I can again use my arm to pull if I want, or I can just swim. I'll take a couple strokes this way and wait for her to turn around. If she doesn't, you can go to the goal. If she does, that's when you're going to switch directions and swim backwards for the ball. Does that make sense? <laughs> that looks intense. That looks really, really intense. In synchronized swimming, it's definitely a more predictable environment. You kind of know what to expect from your teammates since you're all working together. Whereas here, you're against an opponent and you don't really know what to expect. There's unknown elements. I'm terrified, but I'm excited to try it. I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a lot of fun. I think it definitely takes a lot of uh, coordination with that, but then it also takes a lot of strength as well. I should be pretty decent at that one, hopefully. <laughs> I hope I can just do all the movements correctly and try to get around or over the person I need to get over. Okay, 
my first release. We're going to work on the crossover release. So that's the one where I'm locked up with you. I'm going to be your defender. You're going to take three or four really quick strokes. Then with your right hand, you're going to grab right above my left elbow okay. and come over the top with your left hand. So the idea is that you're using your body to block me away from where you want to get the ball. You ready to go? I think so. Yeah, here we go. Very cool. Did I do it? That's good, but stop right here. <laughs> if you keep going, I can now get the ball. It's a quick movement and then a quick stop. Okay. scratched you. That's okay. I get scratched all the time. <laughs> so you're also going to do the crossover. Ready? Yeah. Here we go. Oh. That was pretty good. <laughs> I feel like Honestly. I'm slashing for life. <laughs> no, that's good. Honestly, the next part is only just to step and call for the ball. Okay. One more time. Oh. That was good. Sorry. That was good. <laughs> Grab with your right and then cross over with your left. Okay. Ready? Yeah. But you want to stop right here. So just okay. block my body and stop right there. Go ahead. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> For the second release, we're going to work on a cutoff. So this is when your defender is playing in the passing lane. So the ball is over here, mm -hmm. and I'm going to be playing like this. So you can't use the crossover because I'm there. Mm -hmm. So you're going to take a few strokes behind me, wait for me to turn around and as soon as i turn around you're going to change directions and get the ball mm -hmm. going that way and i saw you have your hand on ashley do you sometimes push them yes away? you okay. can as soon as i turn my back you can use your right hand to push off my back and go backwards okay ready to give it a shot let's do it <laughs> i don't know if you spun around in a circle but you can just literally go straight in and straight out if you going in is going to make me think you're going to the goal okay Ready? There you go. Imagine I'm in the passing lane between you and the ball. So instead of going in front, you're going to take a few strokes behind my back. Wait for me to turn because I'm thinking you're going to the goal. And that's when you pop back the other way. Okay. And go ahead. Good. For your second release, you can even take like three strokes. Okay. I'll turn and then like two strokes backwards. So okay. you're covering a little bit more distance. Back strokes. Yes. There you go. That was good. Yay. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That was good. Okay. That was good. The only thing you could add is just it being explosive. Oh. So as soon as I turn, that's your opportunity oh, to use good. my momentum to go as fast as you can back in the other direction. Ready? Yeah. Good. It's definitely a contact sport, so you definitely have to be like in somebody else's face, you know, and kind of like just right there and personal. I like that one. I think it's different to go from one direction to another like really quickly and be explosive, like she said. It's hard like when you're practicing it, but I feel like in the real world, I can see how it would come a lot more naturally. But it was definitely, definitely a challenge. I think they did a really good job. Something most people struggle with when they're first starting a water polo is the contact and how aggressive you're allowed to be underwater. They kind of just went for it. They weren't afraid to grab and pull, to push off. They were even asking me how, like, different techniques and how to do that. And so I thought that was really cool and how they kind of just jumped right in in order to release and get open for the ball. For our fourth challenge, we're going to be doing goalie lunges. Field players will say that shooting is the most fun part of the game, but goalies know the truth. <laughs> <laughs> to block a shot, there can be a high corner lunge, a low corner lunge, blocking a skip shot, which is a shot that bounces off the water, and then a lob lunge. I'm going to show you a very basic high corner lunge, which I don't think you guys will have too much trouble with because it's a very similar <laughs> to a boost. You're going to use your boost technique and pretty hands to get to the corner. Some keys to think about are timing. Timing is really important and stability. You guys already know how to tread water and you know how to skull. I'm gonna use my skull and my tread to get me high up in the water, but to a point where I feel stable and ready for a shot so I can just lunge right out of it. Some keys to the lunge physically, that brush stroke kick in your boost. Your eyes need to follow your hand to the corner so that you get the maximum distance. Don't turn your shoulder, don't close yourself. A lot of people tend to do that because it feels like you're getting further. Keep your body open so that you have flexibility to move. Your lunge is always going to be the same. The thing that's going to change is the shot from the shooter. You're going to try to be as consistent as possible. I'm going to do a high corner lunge to my right. 
I bring my hands close, I push with my off hand, I brush or kick at the same time as I do that, and I push to my right, and then I recover back. <laughs> <laughs> So to brush your kick, once you're out, bring your knees back up to your chest and you'll be ready for the next shot. Ready to try it? Yeah. Okay, let's go on the goal. I've always wanted to do it, but looking at Ashley and looking at Rachel do it, I'm freaking terrified. Yeah, I don't want to block shots from either of them. They're very powerful. Um, hopefully I just get to block shots from these girls. <laughs> kind of like what I mentioned before, my biggest fear is getting hit in the face. But I want to be confident and say that I, I think I have what it takes. pretty well. I don't know if she's going easy on me or if my egg beater is okay, but yeah, it goes pretty well. I actually blocked some shots and kind of proud of that. I thought I did a pretty good, good job. It was fun. It felt really cool to block it and then see the ball not being in the goal. <laughs> so it's, 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 a, it's rewarding. <laughs> the girls did amazing. They were just aggressive moving to the ball. They had great lateral movement. A lot of people are afraid to become a goalie because they're scared to get hit in the face and they're just like afraid of the ball a little bit. That fear is always there, but the drive to not let someone score is so much greater than that and so much more fun. Like the goalie is the center of the defense. Like we run the show. So everyone, if you're gonna try water polo, be a goalie. <laughs> For our final challenge, we're gonna put everything we just learned together in one big circuit. Essentially, we're gonna have one of you as a passer, one of you as a releaser, and then one of you in the goal as a goalkeeper. We can go two in a row, so we'll get each of the releases in. So one shot on a crossover release, and then one shot on a cutoff release. And then we have each one of our caps to give you guys to wear, so that you can really get the feel of a real water polo player. <laughs> We're gonna demonstrate for you guys right now. Okay. We're gonna have somebody release, they're gonna receive a pass, take a shot on the goalie, and then we'll rotate in one big circle so everyone does every position. I'm excited, but I hope I can do half as well as them and make uh, Rachel proud since I'm wearing her cap. Same. I want to make Ashley proud. Rep her number well. I'm really excited though. It was a lot to remember, but I think we got it down packed. And Elise, I hope I make you proud too. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> 
The girls did really, really well in that final circuit. I could tell the skills we taught them starting to click in. It's practice, it's repetition, and it's drive. And they definitely have that competitive spirit. Their passing's coming along, their catching's coming along, their shooting's awesome, and their blocking's probably the best part of it. It was awesome. The coolest thing for me to see is just how they went for it. Like, they weren't afraid to block the ball. They weren't afraid of the contact. The circuit was exhausting, but it was a lot of fun, especially with the shooting and uh, being goalie. I actually didn't think I wanted to be goalie when I began this because I don't like balls coming, you know, like towards me. I get really scared of the ball, but um, I was able to block it. So I was actually proud of myself for that. And I think that was my favorite element. I loved playing goalie. Ashley, I'm coming for you. Uh, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Releasing was definitely the hardest thing for me because I'm so used to something being so choreographed as opposed to something that's so random and unknown, I guess. With synchronized swimming, you don't think on the fly as often as you do with water polo. Like, they may completely go right and you've been prepped to go left, you know, so you kind of have to, like, react in the moment. Whereas with synchro, you practice the same routine for an entire season, so you're pretty, you know, set on what to expect. Water polo, looking from the outside in, kind of looks like unattainable. When I was younger, I didn't know too much about the sport and I just saw it as like something that was kind of like messy almost. But seeing how organized things are, seeing how controlled and calm and collected these athletes are, is something totally different. There's a lot of coordination that goes with it, a lot of egg beater, a lot of power. And you're staying in like a little box, whereas I'm sure they're swimming up and down the pool, which takes like a lot more, you know, for you mentally. I think that the coolest thing between synchro and water polo is the common ground of treading water it just helped both athletes like us in synchro and them in water polo just have a really strong foundation. They were all like super into it, super open to it, and I think they actually had a lot of fun doing it, which was awesome, and we had a lot of fun helping them along and coaching them. It was, it was really cool. By the end, they were shooting the ball really hard, like getting a lot of force behind it, and then also making some like really cool blocks on the goal, which was really exciting. My respect for the sport has like reached new levels. I don't know, maybe I might just have to introduce a little water polo to our synchro practice. <laughs>